So I appreciate Emily starting out with that beautiful article from Petra Weldes, um, All the Wisdom of the Trees. I've picked a few special words, I think, we can all learn from, from the trees. You know, trees have been here 370 million years on this planet. They have something to teach us. They also are the prime source of oxygenating, oxygenating the air for us. So we need, am I standing by something that's doing something weird, Kirk? Making a vibration? Huh? OK, good. So I want you to think of your relationship right now with trees. I mean, I know we have some people here that really love trees. I mean, they are just really tree huggers and lovers. And, but think of your relationship with those beautiful givers of life. Because they have so much to teach us, and we have so much to learn. The number one thing I realized from trees is faith. Kind of interesting, that was the first thing that came up to me, but faith. Faith in the process of life. We already know, we teach it and talk about it every week and read it in our Science of Mind magazine and our spiritual books. And God is all there is. And with God, all things are possible. Well, do you live that way? How much of the time? Most of the time? OK. Because the trees live it all the time. Joseph Campbell, a beautiful comparative uh, teacher of comparative religion, comparative psych, um, mythology, um, of course, the author of The Hero's Journey, we love him, said, you know, I really think about nature and about trees and about grass. And I think, what if one of the little blades of grass said, well, for Pete's sake, if you keep cutting me down like this, why should I keep growing? <laughs> and you know what? They never ask that. Trees never ask, why should I grow? They just know. They use that invisible source of life, their roots that they can't see, that picks up the energy of life to do what God intended them to do, to grow, to grow a trunk and a core, to grow foliage, to blossom, to give fruit, whatever that particular tree is. And there's no two trees that are alike, just like us. But they know what they're supposed to do. They tap into source all the time. We could do better at that, don't you think? That faith there is something for us to remember. So when you go out today and look at the trees and nature and everything else, I want you to think of faith, having the faith that everywhere we are, God, life energy, creative potential, all of that is right there in its fullness. It's up to us. You see, the other thing, trees don't judge, so they didn't tell us this, but you know, human ignorance, human ignorance is something that causes us not to accept all the gifts that we've been given. We look at all the conditions and experiences in our life, and we say, I can't. I, just as Gretchen was singing, I'm not enough, but I'm already enough. And we start judging life and stopping that flow. We block life from flowing through us with our judgment, our negativity, our criticism, our self of life and others and all of that. And it's time that we truly realize that when we stand on our own two feet, we can know we're not alone. I remember once when, as, as a new kindergarten teacher, I remember going into my first kindergarten class. And I came in just like that, boom. I didn't have a lot of preparation. I didn't do any student teaching in kindergarten. Um, and I asked the kids to pick up the red crayon. And this was way before now. This was so long ago. Kids know red at two now, but this was a long time ago. And they looked at me like I was crazy. So I had a lot of learning to do myself. You enter into a new situation, you have a lot of learning to do. But I love teaching. I, I'm a little shy, though. And I'd, I'd get into committees, and I'd love the committees helping the education program as a beginning teacher. And I remember my principal asked me to go speak to the board of, direct, uh, the board of education about one of the committees we're doing. And I went, oh, I'd love to. 
you know, and froze in, my, in the spot right there. And one of my friends who'd been doing some study in meditation and energy work said, well, I have an idea for you. Before you go and speak, I want you to go wherever you want to go, in the ladies' room, wherever you want to go, and just be a tree. Pull, grow roots at the bottom of your feet and pull that energy up to the center of your being. And feel it as it goes. And then open up, open your head, your crown chakra, and let the energy of the earth, of the sky, of heaven, of God, of love, whatever it is, just open up to it and let it meet in your heart center and speak from there. So when I went into that room, you know, I'm shy, but when I went in there, I felt grounded, I felt good, and I didn't feel alone. And it went off well. I don't remember what I said, but I remember the dress I wore. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, so that's a good, good lesson, and I pass it on to Kirk, and he said, you know, how, that was, we don't even want to say how many years ago. But um, we still remember that. It's still a powerful lesson and message for us. Um, the other thing that I really thought about with trees is the balance they have. The balance of life that is held in the wisdom of those trees. And I want to read to you, uh, this is from John O'Donohue's book, Walking in Wonder. And he says, I think trees are incredible presences. There is an, an incredible symmetry in trees between their inner life and their outer life, between their rooted memory and their external active presence. A tree grows up and down at the same time and produces enough branches to incarnate their wild divinity. A tree doesn't limit or doubt itself. A tree doesn't limit or doubt itself. It reaches for the sky and it reaches for source at the same time. It doesn't doubt itself. All in one seamless kind of movement. I think landscape is an incredible teacher. And when you begin to tune into its presence, its sacred presence, something shifts inside of you. When you really get to that place in nature, something shifts inside of you. You know, when we, thinking of that balance, the outer life and the inner life, if we think about it, when Ernest, Ernest Holmes loved trees, he loved trees, he loved to talk to trees, but he didn't just talk to them, he listened. But he knew there was a knowing inside of him that we can talk to trees because everything is energy. The, that nature is the glory of God, the energy of God. Albert Einstein said energy and mass, the invisible and visible, are the same thing. They're identical. They're interchangeable. And that gives us the understanding and why in the world we could listen to nature and really learn about it and understand because it has an invisible source also just like we do. And if we take the time, take the time to listen and be aware, we can really listen to the wisdom of the trees. Another memory I had about trees is this was when we had I can't remember what year it is, but a group of us from our center went to Ghana, Africa to b visit br Brother Ishmael Teke. How many of you know Brother Ishmael Teke? Possibility living. That's what he'd always say. We need, need possibility living. And he is this amazing, he's a gorgeous African mystic who has a transdenominational metaphysical center in Ghana, Africa, Africa called the Ethereum Mission where he's teaching self-awareness to people and also the gift of natural sciences. So he teaches about nature. Native African spirituality is based on nature. And so he combines that with all the teachings and denominational teachings and wisdom that the mystics teach. So we went there, and it's just amazing. You would be really glad their church services are five hours long. Yeah, that was kind of long. 
Okay, long time. But he took us to, one of his workshops was to take us to a botanical garden in Ghana, in Ghana, Africa. But it wasn't like the botanical gardens around here, not all lush and green and beautiful. Neutral colors, and it was live with energy. And our task, we had a little notebook, was to go find a tree that called to us it for a, at least an hour. The message of the trees, the wisdom it had to share. I, I was really realized when you, I sat there and listened, it took time for my defenses to move and be released because I'm like, what's this tree going to say to me? I didn't understand, but when you listen, you're touching the bark of the tree and sitting with your back against the tree. And I'll tell you, I, that African spirituality of listening to nature and understanding its wisdom, it really became alive and real to me. It was absolutely beautiful. And um, he said also that the wisdom of the tree, so we, we took, wrote down all this wisdom from the tree, but then we had to go get the inner realization that that same wisdom can flow from us. Am I off? Hey, are we good? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so we learned faith, our own human limitations. We learned about balance, about listening. But I think the biggest lesson of the tree comes from the tree of life. Did we get that slide, Kirk, by any chance? Okay, the tree, oh, the wisdom of the tree. Oh, oh, that tree needs, looks very serious. But there's a slide here, I think, Mel, if we can put that up. Yeah, the tree of life. It's a Celtic symbol, but it's also, uh, the tree of life was first mentioned in the book of Genesis in the Bible. And then that tree of life is very a life-giving tree, very, very life-giving, giving life to the physical and spiritual nature of humans. It's here to share with us the law of growth and connection. But most importantly, this tree is to teach us about the unity of spirit of God and humans, that we are one with God forever and ever and ever. That's the lesson. And trees know this too. There's a oneness that they use that power. And for us, we'll do a little prayer, a little meditation at the end, connecting with our own power and letting that open up so we can feel the wisdom of God and spirit work through us. But that's the Celtic message here. You know, uh, John O'Donohue, uh, yes, he was uh, into, he was a priest and an author and a philosopher, but he was also best known for popularizing, popular, popular making popular <laughs> the Celtic spirituality. And the ancient Celts believed that the trees are ancestors of the humans, and they are actually a gateway to spirit, the gateway, which is beautiful. But there's more about the trees. Um, if you look at the tree, and this comes from the permaculture study, but Rumi says, every forest branch moves differently in the breeze. Just picture that. Every forest branch moves differently in the breeze. But as they sway, they connect at the roots. They connected the roots. And this is a little piece of a very long article about, um, from the a permaculture uh, book. And it says, the trunks and leaves of the tree you see only begin to tell the story. What you can't see are the underground roots that make up a vast and complex interconnected system. Those roots are not connected to each other physically but they are connected and joined by an internet of fungi, of bacteria. And this bacteria creates a system of connectivity among the tree roots and enables trees to communicate with each other, to share information, to share resources and healing. And it went on in the article to explain there's, when there's a sick tree in the forest, the other trees are aware of that and will send the nutrients needed to try to heal that tree. 
Isn't that something we need to do more of? Learn how to help one another in that way. So I want to start right now. Of course, everything starts with an inward process. So I want to start by just holding, holding the space right now. If you put your feet flat on the ground, make your trunk of your body as long and tall and open as possible. Unwrap, unclasp your arms. And just join me in this moment of a prayerful meditation. At this time, in this place, just imagine from the bottom of your feet these beautiful invisible roots are growing and connecting into the wisdom of life, of nature, providing nutrients and strength and goodness, knowing that the real power in the world is connected to goodness. And feel those roots as they collect what you need in this very moment, what you need right here and right now to bring energy and strength into your bringing, to, to bring creativity, new vitality, new understanding, new acceptance, surrender, awareness, whatever it is, and let that wisdom just move up through the bottoms of your feet, up your legs, till your legs feel strong and sturdy. And let that energy, that wisdom, what you need for fulfillment, and strength right now, move into your heart center. And let that wisdom just be held there for a moment while you open up and free your crown chakra and reach into the wisdom of the stars and the sky and the heavens and the wisdom of infinite intelligence. Open to possibility and newness and greater understanding. And let that creative possibility, that beautiful energetic, I call them the white sparklies of God's love, just move into your crown chakra, into your beautiful mind, opening your mind, releasing any pain or guilt or anger or hurt, and moving down through your throat, clearing your voice that you may speak and be heard, and again, move into the heart center where heaven and earth, where physicality and spirituality meet right there in the center of the heart. And from that place when what you need, the nutrients, the, oh, just the nutrients, the understanding, the peace, and then the, mm, the wisdom and the light of creativity meet together, possibility. And then as you just energetically, not, not actually, open your arms to see what is it that you are called to do right now. As you open yourself up to expressing life and growing, accepting exactly who you are right now, for better or worse in this moment, and knowing that there's something more, that we are all here to grow and become and be, that life energy of goodness and light. It may be something you need to do for yourself to take better care of you. It may be something you need to do in your home, with your family, with your friends, at work, whatever it is. Let that energy, and even if it's not clear in this moment, just let it be open and ask that it be revealed to you when the time is right, when you're ready, because you are open and available. And just letting that energy flow through you, that work being happening, happening in you right now, let us just know in this moment that the goodness of God is the truth of this and every moment, that we are surrounded by a life force, energy, a power, and a beauty, that same life force that created the world and everything in it. It's there for us always, infinitely, eternally, right here, right now. It's there. And as we open up, to the power and presence of God's goodness, we are become a fit, beautiful vehicle to be an expression of spirit, a unique and individualized expression of this beauty and goodness and peace right here, right now, that we allow that harmony to express through us. 
the goodness of God to be the truth of who we are right now. And as we let this energy work keep doing its work while we choose in this moment to take a nice deep breath in, to let the energy keep doing its work as we consciously open our eyes, as we consciously use the power of life to make us stronger, more connected to our true self, to God, and of course, to one another. And in this moment, if you will just speak with me, I accept the goodness of God within me now. I am ready to be an expression of light. I am energized. I am alive. I'm aware. I'm alert. I'm enthusiastic. I'm ready. I'm ready to be. I'm ready to do. And I'm ready to love life even more. And I mean it. Uh, and it's just, I love that I see a little smile here because I know sometimes we speak the words and we don't mean it truly, but wholly and completely we are ready. And I just thank you for being part of the goodness, the energy for light and love, for connectivity that's happening here in the world. I know together we can do amazing things. We're already doing it. There's a light in each one of us. And when we share our lights together, the world becomes so much brighter. I love you all. I appreciate you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so it is.